Hey everybody, so today I wanted to show you how you can install Windows 11 on an unsupported computer. So I have this Dell Precision M6800 that's been a great machine for me, but it does not support Windows 11. So I'm going to show you how we can boot that computer up, go into the Windows installer, and I can actually install Windows 11 on it. And I'm going to show you how it doesn't work before I make the changes, what changes you need to make, and how it will work afterwards. So, let's go over to the computer and I'm going to show you exactly what steps you need to take in order to get Windows 11 on this computer. Okay, so the first thing you want to do when you want to install Windows 11 on a computer that's not supported, or even one that is supported, is you need to have a Windows 11 bootable flash drive that will install Windows 11 onto that computer. So I made this one in my previous video and I did it on a Mac computer. If you'd like to see that video, I've included a link right here for you. So now that I have this installer ready to go, I'm gonna go ahead and insert it into the USB slot and then I'm gonna press the power button and on this computer, I'm gonna press F12. Now that's gonna get me to the boot menu. Now, depending on which kind of computer you have, like an Acer, an Asus, a Lenovo, any of the other brands, you're going to have to find out what key will get to your boot menu so that you can select the USB flash drive. And you may even have to make some changes in the BIOS in order to be able to boot to your flash drive. So keep that in mind as well. All right, but on this one, I'm going to turn it on and I'm going to go ahead and press F12. Now, you may have to press F12 quite a few times in order for it to say that it's going into the boot menu. But as you can see, mine came up fairly quick. And I'm going to go down and select the UEFI USB. And then I'm going to press Enter. Now that's going to boot up to this flash drive that I have installed. And just so you know, this is a USB 3.0 flash drive so that it's quicker. You can use USB 2.0. There's nothing wrong with it. It's just 3.0 is 10 times quicker. Okay, so now we're into the installer. So I wanted to show you how this will not work. And then I wanted to show you what steps we need to take in order for it to work. Okay. So what you would do is here, you're just going to select your language to install. You're going to install the time and currency format and the keyboard or input method. I'm going to leave all mine the same and I'm going to go ahead and click next. And then I'm going to click on install now. Now setup is starting and then in just a moment it's going to get some, a couple of questions for me that I can answer. This is the first one. Do I want to go ahead and put a product key in? I'm going to go ahead and say I don't have one because you can install Windows 11 without a product key. It'll continue to bug you and say, please activate Windows, but you can install it. Now here you can choose any of the versions of Windows 11 that you want. I'm going to just come down here and choose Windows 11 Pro and click Next. Now, if you'll notice right here, it says, this PC can't run Windows 11. Well, that's exactly what we're going to fix. So here what I'm going to do is I'm going to click on the back button. And I'm going to click the back button again. And then we're back to where it wants to activate Windows. Now here's the trick. This is pretty neat. We're going to press Shift and F10 at the same time. And it brings up the command prompt. Now... If you will type in reg edit, which stands for registry editor, we're going to go ahead and type that in and press enter. It brings up the registry editor. So now what we're going to do is we're going to scroll to the H key local machine and then we're going to go down to system and we're going to go down to setup. Now, underneath setup, we're going to right click and you can you can do this either place. You can click on setup and then over here right click and create a new 
You can even right click on setup here and click on new or you can even do it from the menu. You can click on edit and go to new. But all we're going to do is we're going to create a brand new key. So we're going to go ahead and click on key from whichever menu you choose. And then what we're going to name it is we're going to name it lab config. Now the L has to be capital L A B and then config. The C has to be capital C O N F I G. And then we're just going to click off of it. And that created a brand new key for us. Now, Underneath this key, we have to create three new D words. What those D words are going to do is it's going to allow you to bypass the TPM check saying that, oh, I'm sorry, you don't have the right version of TPM. It's going to allow you to bypass secure boot. So if you don't have secure boot turned on on your computer, it's still going to work. And the last one is the CPU check. So maybe your processor just won't handle Windows 11. It's just barely below it. Well, all three of those are going to allow it to go through and just work no matter what. So let's go ahead and create those. So what we're going to do is we're going to right click or again, you can right click on lab config or you can go up to edit. Anyway, we're going to go to new on any of those three, create a D word 32 bit, and then you have to type in the three. So the very first one is bypass. And then you have to put TPM all in caps. So capital T, capital P, capital M. And then you're going to put check with a capital C. So C H E C K and then press enter. Now we've got that put in. You're going to double click on it, put a one and click. Okay. Now what we're going to do is we're going to do the same thing again. Right click, go to new, go to D word 32 bit value. And we're going to click on it. And then we're going to make the bypass secure boot check. So bypass secure boot check. Okay. So bypass secure boot check, click off of it. And then you're going to double click on it, put a one and click. Okay. And then the last one. So we're going to right click, go to new, go to D word 32 bit value. And here we're going to do the CPU. So we're going to bypass capital C, capital P, capital U, and then check with a capital C. And then we're going to click off of it, double click it, put a one, click OK. So after you put those that key in and you put those three D words in, that's all we have to do. So what we're going to do now is we're just going to close the registry editor. We're going to close the command prompt. Now we're going to say, I don't have a product key. Then we're going to select Windows 11 Pro or Home or any of the other versions that you want to use. And then go ahead and click Next. And now, if you'll notice, I can now install it. So all I have to do here is say, I accept this license agreement and I click next. And then I'm going to do a custom install. And here you go. You can remove everything that's on the computer, which I'll go ahead and do. I'll just go ahead and delete all these partitions. There you go. Nothing is on the drive. So now all I'm going to do is click next and it's going to copy all the files and it's going to go ahead and install everything. So I'll let it run through so that you can see that Windows installs on this and it'll boot up just fine. Now this will run really quick on this computer because I have 32 gigs of RAM and I have a solid state drive. So this is going to be really, really quick for you. And so that's going to help make it go through the installer so much quicker. So let's give it just a moment or two. I'll be right back. And I'm going to fast forward it, of course, for you all, so you don't have to wait. But I'll be back in just a few seconds, and you'll see that it's up and running, and it's working perfectly. Now, 
you may ask yourself, well, why would you not want to do this? Is there, are there any downsides to it? There are a couple. You may have trouble with certain computers. It's not really built to handle Windows 11. So you may have some issues there. And also, you may have to manually install some of the Windows 11 updates. They may not install automatically because they're looking for certain computers and yours doesn't meet the criteria. So the updates won't install automatically. Suppose we went from 21H2 to 22H2. Well, your computer may not show the 22H2. You may have to manually download and install that update or you may actually sometimes, not always, but sometimes have to go and do a clean install of Windows 11 22H2 or 23H2 or whatever version comes next. So just keep that in mind that you might have to manually install some of those updates. But just wanted you to know that. I don't see any reason that you couldn't run it though if you had to have it for some reason, but this would at least allow you to get Windows 11 onto your computer. So, I'll be back in just a few moments. So, as you can see, I was able to get Windows 11 running on this computer. Now, I did have to go through the setup. And if you want to see how I went through the setup without having to use a Microsoft account, I created a link right here for you so that you can watch that video to see how I did not have to use a Microsoft account on this computer. Because to be honest with you, I didn't want to have to create a Microsoft account. I just want a local account that I can do my work on. Now you may feel the same way. Some of you may not care or it may not matter to you and that's fine, but if it does, interest you and you don't want to have to create a Microsoft account, watch that video right up there and I'll show you exactly how I did that. If you do have any questions about this procedure or maybe you ran into another problem with your computer and you would like to ask me a question about it, please let me know down below in the comments and I'll do my best to get back to you about that. And if you have a video that you'd like me to create for you, maybe it's another one on Windows 11. Maybe it's on a Dell computer. Maybe it's on something entirely different. Please let me know down below in the comments and I'll do my best to create that video for you. And as always, because you all do such a great job, if you can, hit that like and subscribe button so I can keep putting up more great content like how do I install Windows 11 on a computer that's not supporting it. And I'll continue to put these videos up for you all. Thanks so much. I really appreciate you all. I hope you have a great day. God bless. Take care. And I'll see you all next time. Bye.